Hi, 8E. It's Mrs. Templin here. Um, I'm away on music camp this week. Um, so we're going to do a video lesson today, reminding, refreshing what you did on index law 1 already and learning index laws 2 and 3. So you don't need to write this little bit down. So this should be review. Okay, so index law 1, which was on multiplication. So the rule was if we have the same base, we can simplify products of powers by adding the indices and remember that the bases don't change. So that's really important that the bases don't change. Okay, so a couple of examples of that. If I've got a to the 4 times a to the 7, well that's just a to the 4 plus 7, which is of course a to the power of 11. If the base is a number, it doesn't change anything. Our basis is still going to say the exact same. So this is 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 5. Remember that's really 3 2's multiplied by 5 2's. Okay? So it's still just going to be 2 to the 3 plus 5, not 4, because it doesn't become 4's when I multiply it. Okay? That becomes 2 to the 8. However, looking at part C, remember this number in front is called a coefficient. Okay, so we've got the 5 and the 3, which are the coefficients. Coefficients, we just do what we've always done with coefficients and multiply them together as is, and then we are going to add the indices. So we end up with 5 times 3, and then a to the 8 plus 5, which gives me 15a to the 13. So that should be refresher. Let's learn a new index law. So write this down in your notes. Okay, big heading for index law 2, which is on division. Okay. So you can pause at any time um, if I'm talking a little bit too fast. So if we have the same base, okay, so the same number, that's the bigger number, okay, we can simplify quotients. Remember, quotients is dividing. We can simplify quotients of powers by subtracting the indices. Okay, so multiplication, we add, division, we subtract. Again, the base does not change. So the rule looks like this a to the m divided by a to the n. It might also be written as a fraction. Okay, those two are completely interchangeable. Is a to the m minus n. So why is that? Let's look at an example in expanded form. So remember a to the 5 over a to the 3. Well that would be a multiplied by itself 5 times over a multiplied by itself 3 times. But of course because it's the same base, well, a divided by a, that cancels out, and that's 1. That cancels out, and that cancels out, leaving me with a times a, which is, of course, a squared. And you'll notice 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay, so that's our second index law on division. We can basically save all this working in the middle. Okay, sometimes we don't want to show all our working. Well, for this, we get to skip a step and jump straight from there to there. So let's do a couple of examples. So example two, simplify using index law two. So you'll notice the questions start out with just the basic application, adding in some numbers and then some coefficients. So the first one, a to the six divided by a squared. Well my index law says I need to subtract the indices. So it becomes a to the 6 minus 2, which is just a to the 4. Okay, so that's just a basic application. Now, remembering that when we've got a number that's the base, the base doesn't change. So this is really 5 to the 7 minus 3, which is of course 5 to the 4. The 5's do not cancel out. Really remember, think about it, what it is in expanded form. It's really seven fives all multiplied over three fives being multiplied. So we can cancel out three of them, leaving us with four. Now, part C, where we add in some coefficients. So remember, coefficients, we treat them just like normal numbers. So we are, I like to rewrite it first, um, when I've got coefficients, rewriting it as a fraction first. Okay, and then I want to have a think about kind of what I can simplify. Um, so I might simplify the number, the coefficients first. So remembering what's a common factor of 20 and 8? 
Well, four divides both of those evenly. 20 divided by four is five, and eight divided by four is two. So this simplifies to five a to the eight over two a to the five. And then using our index law, eight minus five is three. So I end up with five a cubed over two. So these get tricky when you've got some fractions, but you're all absolute pros at reducing fractions. We had lots of practice with that earlier in the year. So we just reduce the fractions as usual, but then with the indices, we can subtract those. So make sure that you're not subtracting 20 minus eight, okay? Because those aren't indices, those are coefficients, so they don't get the index laws. All right, so that's our second index law. So we've done multiplication, we've done division. What comes next? Well, zero, okay? Index law three, also known as the zero index law. The rule is anything to the power of zero is one, okay? Um, I'm lying to you a little bit. Zero technically to the power of zero is not one, um, but you will never see that um, for quite some time. So pretty much anything, you, if you raise it to the power of zero, it just simply becomes one. Let's have a think about why that is. So if I had a cubed over a cubed, hopefully you can agree that that's, if I was to subtract the indices, I would get three minus three, which is zero. So that's really a to the zero. Okay, because if I was to subtract the indices, three minus three is zero, so that's a to the zero. But I could also rewrite it as a whole bunch of a's being multiplied, and then all of my a's are gonna cancel out leaving me with one. So I get that a to the zero is one. Okay, because if I was to subtract those indices using the previous law, of course, that would tell me this is a to the zero. So that's equal to one. So let's try applying this um, to some new scenarios. So it's the thing that has the power of zero that is equal to one. So we've got varying levels of examples here. So the first one, a to the zero, well, my rule says anything to the power of zero is one, all right? Now, part B is actually a little bit trickier. Okay, we have to look very carefully at what's actually being raised to the power of zero. Notice the two, it's not being raised to the zero. The A is being raised to the zero, and the B isn't. So a to the zero, that becomes one. So it's two times one times b, which of course is two b. So really be careful. Don't just, as soon as you see a zero, make it one. It's just the factor that's to the power of zero that becomes one. Now, question C, we like doing these ones. They're lots of fun. It looks crazy and insane. Four, and then a whole bunch of stuff to the power of zero. I don't care what's inside the brackets because all of that stuff is to the power of zero. So I can think of this big bracket as anything, okay? Anything to the zero is one. So it becomes four times one, which of course is just four. So really being careful with what exactly is being brought to the power of zero, that simplifies to one, okay? Now the teacher will have assigned you some particular questions to do. You'll have both Monday and Tuesday to work on those questions and you'll be looking at index law number four on Thursday, or sorry, on Wednesday. Have a great week and I'll see you on Thursday.